Let's try it again. There, this time I've got voice. Things. We are having quite a few technical difficulties behind the scenes, so pardon <laughs> if it, we seem a little bit discombobulated. Everything I've seen suggests it's a Discord-wide thing, so it's not just us. Yeah, Discord has been having problems, Google has been having problems, lots of problems everywhere, and then my afternoon has been an afternoon of snafus, so it's been fun. Anyway, we are finally together again on our episode Endings and Beginnings because we are definitely having endings and beginnings tonight. This is a very pivotal e episode. When we left off last week, the team had lost Vlad. He had gone down when the Lich had basically pointed a finger at him and killed him some very powerful things they managed to do in the Lich when it was over, but they now they have made the sad trip back to Velaki and have arrived at the guard station. And they have some sad news to relay to things. You return to the typical thing. The gates are closed when you arrive, and the guards at first are very hesitant until they realize who it is that's coming in. They seem a little bit more reluctant, and it looks more like the problems that you had when you first arrived, but they immediately see that it is a POTUS and the crew, and they, they pull their spears back and pardon, very sorry, Commander, we did not expect you. We uh, it has been very hard. There have been attacks, and we have had to close the gates. Understandable. Just let us pass. They open the gates and allow you to come through with no problem, except they, uh, they glance into Victor's wagon as you pass through and suddenly realize that Vlad is laying in Victor's wagon. Let me get this up. So the stream can properly see the gates, too. Commander, what has happened to Vlad? Why is he in the wagon? Is he ill? That's above, you, that's above your pay grade. Continue your duties. Uh, yes, sir. Should I get Captain McHale? Have him have him send send him send word for him to come to the temple. Um, if there's anything that you need to know, you will learn from him. Yes, sir. And they uh, they salute still looking kind of confused. They salute and allow you to pass through, and you are able to move down the Velaki Street to the church, which of course is the first large building that you come to. So you return to St. Andrew's Church. When you arrive, Father Petrovich and Irina are standing outside at the front door. There are, as usual, numerous children running around Irina. She's never without children at her heels. And she waves happily as she sees the group of you coming up. Uh, Epotus goes to make sure that the drape over Vlad is Yeah, I was just proper. about to do the same thing. <laughs> I was just about to say about the same thing. I was like, we're going to. I figured, like, after we got through the gates, we would have made sure he stayed hidden. I, I take this... I, I take this uh, kind of... Uh, like, gears run through my head, and I go on further ahead and approach the, the kids, and like, oh, here are little ones, let's go over this way, and pretty much act as, like, a giant jungle gym for them to climb on as... I go further out and obviously try to get them away from the coffin. Uh, Irina, 
Father yes. Petrobus, could we uh, go somewhere uh, private to speak? Why, yes, of course. We can go into my office. Irina is looking past you and craning her neck around you, uh, and she is starting to look just a bit worried because Vlad's horse is tied to the back of Victor's wagon. And she's look, looking back and forth like, where's Vlad? There, there, there's been an incident. I'd rather speak of it in private. Her face begins to look very worried now, and she follows you and Father Petrovich inside the church and into his private office. Uh, who else is, uh, Dirac is, of course, staying with the children. Sylvia, where are you staying? And Victor, where are you going? Uh, uh, Victor, Victor's going to wait outside for now. I figured POTUS will give them the 411, so I will stay outside as well. He, uh... Ushers you, ushers you, POTUS and Arena into the uh, office <coughs> and closes the door and looks at you very solemnly, beginning to realize something has gone on. How can I help you? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So we went to the Amber Temple and inside we found. Uh, dark, twisted entities chained inside blocks of amber. And um, as we approached, um, they would whisper wishes to grant us, grant you a gift in exchange for freeing them. We went through the temple and we removed several threats from there, including a... Uh, Partially, partial lich who was likely there for some time, possible, who, whose existence there seemed to predate Strahd's turn. So it's likely that this lich uh, had some connection to that. Um, by the time we, we got to him, his mind had already faded but he still had full magical capacity and he spoke a single word and Vlad uh, his heart stopped immediately. And Irina immediately throws open the door and runs out to... Irina! <sighs> I'm going to grab Irina the second she comes out that door. Let, let me see him. Let me see him. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at her, look over to where Durak is with the kids, and go not now. And I will cast suggestion on her to go back inside. I forgot okay. I muted myself. Yeah, I would have made sure that I went far away from the. It's the it's the other it's the other suggestion, not the. Yeah, one that I can pull it up, and I've got to find your sheet here real quick. Irina, where are you? I put the uh, spell up so I know what I have to cast and so forth, what I have to cast against it. Uh, I'm looking to see where it is on my actual spell list. Here it is. I assume it's uh, wisdom or charisma. One edge. Excuse me. Wisdom uh, save. Wisdom. What's your DC? <coughs> my current. Yes. Very good. So, Wisdom 17. Let's see what she gets. She gets a 14, which is not enough. I, she, she kind of looks at you for just a moment like she's very confused. Yes, yes. I, 
I suppose with the children here, we we shouldn't. That's right. We we shouldn't. I I'll go back in the church for now. Oh. It it pretty it pretty much the the suggestion was to go back inside and listen to Epotus. It was just to for what he has to say, kind of deal. And she she just kind of like, oh yes, that would that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Kind of. Uh, thing and she just kind of numbly stumbles back towards the the church and heads back into the office where Father Petrovich is. <sighs> Jeez, I hate doing that. Hippotus, what else will you be saying or doing? Anyway, Father Petrovich, we attempted to revive him through magical means, but we were unsuccessful. We were hoping to preserve him until we got him back here so that he could either, so that unless you had some skill in this regard, or at least he would be able to be buried in holy ground. I don't know if you have this capability, but... How long has he been dead? Uh, how long is the trip from uh, Amber Temple? About a half a day. Uh, this happened... Uh, probably late yesterday. Well, no, I mean... Oh, no, no, th no, this happened like at dawn. Yeah, yeah, you guys we, stumbled we, out yeah. at early dawn and, and went yeah. directly back to the uh, Just before sunrise this morning. Less yeah, than we, a day. This is good. I, I am fairly certain that I can revive him, but I need... Irina, I imagine you already know this, but Potus, I am not sure that you are aware that bringing back the dead in these dark lands does not always have entirely the desired effect. It almost certainly leaves something of their mind behind, and we can never predict exactly how they will react when they return. Is this tied to Strahd? It is tied to the darkness of the land. I believe I have never journeyed outside to be able to compare but it is my theory that somehow or other he has twisted the reviving of souls because of the inability of souls to find their way into the afterlife. If he was dead, would we be able to revive him at his normal capacity? No, if, if, Strahd, I, if Strahd was dead. Oh, if Strahd was dead, I do not know, but there is... There are time constrictions. We must do what we can now, and we will hope that whatever happens to his mind will be short-lived. That's all we can wish for, is that he will be able to overcome the mental incapacities that are caused by such things. But I am able to, to do this. All right, what do you need? I need some various components that I have in the church. I will be able to to revive him shortly. Give me perhaps an hour to pull everything together that I need. All right. I will be right back. And uh Epotus will go out and um, give Dirac a look and just like, you know, nod sort of like away just to make sure that he's keeping the children's attention not in the direction of the cart. Right. Yep. Nope. I got two kids on either arm hanging off of me and yeah. I'm sure there's more around and I'm like, okay, let's keep going this way then. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So Epotus will... Uh, take the draping uh, around Vlad, um, you know, wrap it around him like a Vlad burrito, and um, 
carry him into the uh, carry carry him into the cathedral and um, you know put put him on a appro- you know an appropriate like table or something. Yeah, uh, Father Petrovich will uh, pull for, out from a back room. Will pull out a wooden beer. Uh, kind of thing that apparently is used for funerals and things. It uh, has a cloth on it and some some holy symbols and things around it. Looks like it's a com is commonly used for such things. And he will pull that out and set him on it, and and says, uh, "Return in an hour, and I will be." Re- I'm not going anywhere. I'll let the others know, but I'm not going anywhere. He nods and he goes back into another room. You hear him going downstairs, probably into the undercroft where the sacred bones of St. Andrews is. And he heads down there and you can hear him making various preparations uh, below. And Arena is just standing there. She's looking somewhat numb. She's not crying. She does. She looks just a little bit confused. Are you all right? I, I, I am, I, I want to be outside, but, but somehow I, I, I must be in here. I want to be, uh, I will be, yes, you have brought him in. Oh, I don't know. And suddenly she wanders out of the office and kind of stumbles down the aisle and and like plops down next to the beer where you have laid the body. She just seems very confused at the moment. Could I do like an inside check to figure out if this is just grief or is something affecting her? Or... Yes. You are you're torn a little bit. It could be either one. She could be just like numb with grief, or she could be under some kind of spell. You're not quite sure what's going on. She was all right when you first ushered her into the church, but now she certainly either the shock of realizing that he's dead or something else has definitely affected her. She's not acting normally. All right. So yes, we put us to go out and um, give the update to the others, and uh, like, so the ritual will take place in about an hour. I'm not going anywhere. Irina doesn't want to leave, and um, she, she's clearly grieving Sylvia, but I'm just she's acting a little odd, even for someone grieving. I was wondering if you could come take a look at her just to make sure that. I I I don't I don't have to. Well, we do know. Like we we figured out that part of the reason Strahd went nuts was for the lady who no 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 no. no. You you better mean right? Yes. I don't have to go see her. I know. I'm confused. I happened. You happened. She came out here to see the body. Ah. Uh, and you I suggest that she up. All right. I'm going to stop concentrating on the spell so Rita can go back to normal. Thank you. Look, it was either that or she'd start crying and freaking out in earshot of the kids. At some point, those children are going to have to learn how the world really works. Well, you know, let's. They've seen enough shit as it is. I think they can be spared one more shit. For at least one day. Oh, oh, Sile, I would have to say most of those orphans have been through horrors oh, yeah, beyond I mean, seeing a dead body. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. no, I mean, yeah, no, but it's like, it's more like they started to find some happiness. It's like, let them have that for one more day. 
Yeah, they don't they don't need to know that the heroes <laughs> that are meant to come here to save them are just as mortal as them. Yeah. They don't need they don't need that realization oh, quite no, yet. Geez. Either way, the ritual's in an hour. You can say go, I'm not going anywhere. I've asked Mikhail to send word for Mikhail to come by so I can I'll speak keep with watch them. here. I'll just keep watch here. We're good. All right. <laughs> yeah, right, babysitting the kids. And you just see kids trying to tackle Derok, and Derok is like, oh, <laughs> come on, I know you got better than that. Fair enough. It'll be fun. <laughs> if there's anything wrong, I'll give either a holler or go stop it myself. Sylvia will just look away from the photos and go, I am sorry it didn't work the first time. <laughs> you tried, had he said that he has the power to do it, but this land corrupts it, so even if you had succeeded, it might not have been him that yeah. came back. Yeah, but and we could cross that Petro bridge. Yeah. Even if Petrovich does it, it might not be him when he comes back. I think that, I think he's too stubborn to let that get him. Part of me wonders if I shouldn't just have let him stay dead. Well, <laughs> I mean, we're on a time limit. We either don't do this, preserve him somehow, and hope that when we defeat Strahd, we can leave here and revive him then, which, you know, given what I've heard of these things, the chances get much, much smaller the longer we wait. If you bring him back now, if he is a little funky... We can fix him after. Trust me. I know all about living with a cursed life. It's not fun. But at least it's a life. And, uh... <coughs> scratches his faded scales. Were you inside or outside as you were saying? Outside. Yeah, when, when she makes the comment about living with a cursed life, Victor just kind of looks away, kind of bring his hand to his mouth. Yeah, yeah, this this group has a pretty good idea of what curses are. As you are Hello. talking, uh, you see Mikhail coming. He's not running, but he is walking briskly towards you. But as he is walking down the path, he is almost shoved aside by a small boy with very wide eyes who looks terrified. And he comes running up to you and comes up and like yanks on your tabard to make you notice him. Yes. Are you Commander Ipotus? I am. I, uh, I... Uh, a man gave me a, a a note for you and said that I was to give you the note and he said that I was to tell you that if you do not listen to the note more like this will happen that it was your fault that because you were oh, what did he say because you were offered help and you refused it. And then he holds out a hand at the, and he's shaking. He looks like he's been terrified of the man. And he holds he, out a note at you. He takes, he first takes the note and says, describe this person. He was wearing a cloak with a hood, but he was very tall and he had, he had knee boots that were very shiny. And he looked like he was very rich. Uh, POTUS reads the note. Uh, second. And you can click on it to make it even larger if you need. Yeah. He, he reads a bit of it, just he skims it, and he says, You can go on home, or you can... Try to relax, don't worry, you did perfectly fine. Everything will be all right. He nods like, 
gladly, and he just runs like the devil's on his tail and heads for the center of village. Uh, to read it to the uh, the stream yeah. audience who can't see quite all the. Uh, I'm going to read it. Okay. I'm going to read, read it. Go ahead and read it out loud. He was just waiting for the kid to leave. Doesn't want to terrify right. the kid anymore. Okay, you can read it to the others, and that uh, that'll not, do for me too. I'm not that evil. I mean, <clears throat> are you? Ah, uh, Mikhail, good. Come here. All right. <clears throat> Travelers, you have tried without success to escape my realm. It cannot be done without my permission. I have sent invitations before, and in arrogance or fear, you refuse them. It is time to join me for dinner at Ravenloft. I guarantee you safe passage to my home. A carriage will be awaiting you at the gates to my estate. Come, speak with me, hear what I have to say, and you will learn I do not have to be your enemy. I can be your greatest ally and benefactor. You can gain rewards beyond your imaginings. An old friend is waiting to greet you. And presumably that says, what does that say at the bottom? Is that just Strahd's signature? S SVZ Strahd von Zerofitch. Ah, yep. SVG. It is about time we pay him a visit, isn't it? He takes the note and then he just crushes it in his hand. We're going to have Vlad, we're going to attempt the resurrection of Vlad one more time. If it doesn't work, we're going to bury him in holy ground, and then we're going to rest, and then we're going to go kill this motherfucker. Are you, are you sure you should bury him? Bury him, burn him, whatever. I'm but gonna... <laughs> should we be able to leave? We may want to take him along, as was suggested. This is where he belongs. <coughs> hmm. I do see Someone. your point. Uh, but uh, I'm going to turn and punch a wall and then regret it instantly. <laughs> My <laughs> little tiny bard hands are just like, Stop! Damn it! Are you, all, are you all right, Sylvia? That's she holds friend. up a bleeding fist. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep patting it for cure wounds at this point. So it's like, no, I'm not an old friend. Hello, he still has monarch. Yes, I know, and he's probably already dead. <sighs> We're going to go. We cannot allow him to use anything for leverage. We go. Our only objective is to kill him. Everything else is secondary. Mikhail is looking like he's at a ping pong match looking at you because he hasn't looked, he's got the body covered up and he hasn't looked in the wagon yet. And um, he, he had just- I thought the body was moved. Oh, body's inside. Oh, that's right, the body's inside, yeah. So he hasn't seen the body, but he's, he's like back oh. and forth. The boy had run up, you had called him over, you had this strange note. There are things being said that he, he's not quite sure what's going on. Captain. And so, but, Yes, Commander, what? At ease. Um, there have been several incidents. Vlad has been slain. Keep it under your helmet for the time being. Yes, sir. We are attempting to see if we can revive him in some way. However, the chances of him coming back at full capacity are less than ideal. He will likely have to remain in town. Um, but tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to head to the castle. I mean, is it really enough time, though? I mean, there are people we can what? contact to help. What? I don't know. First off, he invited us. We're not going the route that he wants us to. Do we have any reason to go in the main door? Other it's than to help us make a swift entrance. Do you really think he's going to just let us walk in? 
Somehow I actually have a feeling that he might be good to his word here. It's, uh, a call it instinct. It seems like he, he might be restricted by pride. Dirac isn't here, but I would say the same thing. <laughs> Fine. I just... I'm all for going through the front door. I'm all for walking in, but preparing other people, at least letting them know what's what's up. What? We have allies, don't we? People that if, you know, something? Who would you have us call for that would actually come and enter the castle with us? I don't know, but most of you guys did the talking. I just stayed in the background to keep out of the way. That's not true. Uh, Dirac, maybe you should ask your friend there. I'm uh, currently playing oh. with children. I'm not there. Let's Let see. Me... Uh, what was the goat's name again? Sangzor. Uh, so, yeah, Victor pitches the idea like, uh, uh, Sangzor might have some locals that could go unnoticed. The goats. Yes. <laughs> They're very good at fighting, you know. You, you want us to go get goats? I'm just saying. That's if, not a bad you know, idea. If you're looking <laughs> for allies that can climb around the castle. Hey, and... this, is, this okay, isn't a well... desert in mirror. Like... <laughs> had, had you guys gone to Derek, he actually does have a plan. Well, so... not a plan, but some allies in mind. Oh, I mean, okay. Did Durok become like some sort of weird self king of the barbarians? Just as that too. Well, here's the thing: if we're going we're to accept the this barbarians image, on the goats, if if <laughs> <laughs> I can even do this in the street. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to, we have two options. All out assault, which I'm in favor of, which would include, which would likely need to include all of our, you know, calling in every favor we have, or what the rest of you are suggesting, which is that he's going to be true to his word and we accept his invitation, in which case we were invited. Anybody you bring will be dinner. Okay. What if we take the invite? We go, but <sighs> we just tell them to be in reserve for a sign, something to help shake up things when we need it to be shaken up. They don't come there directly, but they're waiting in the wings for that for that signal. Something. Speaking I mean, of wings, what about the uh, the the raven? The Raven folks. I mean, the Martikovs could definitely be of help, but I mean... But the whole thing was that they don't directly get involved. Well, they can indirectly get involved. I mean, technically, Con haven't they been involved already? I mean, we did help them. Contacting them wouldn't be a bad idea, but I would rather not sit on this very long. No, no, I'm not saying we go, like, at this moment. I mean... <sighs> I'm, say, I'm saying tomorrow. We send word. Barovia isn't that big. And we send, we send word to who we can, where we can. Okay. And, though, and those who can get here, who can assist us, will get here, and then we leave when they've arrived. Or when we've gotten work back. How okay. About... okay, so how about I RSVP back to Creepy, letting him know we're going to join him for dinner. How are you going to do that? I just hold up the pipe that summons the bat. Uh... I play, it sends. We'll tell him that we're on our way, and then we can do the other stuff. Hold off on that. At least he, 
I look at this way. At least this way he knows that we're intending to go to him. That way he doesn't start getting more antsy about it. If, well, here's the thing. If we send word that we're on the way and we're not on the way like at that moment, you don't think you won't get antsy then? The longer that the longer that it, that it takes between you saying that we're coming and us actually arriving, he'll be more antsy than if we... Unless we, tell, unless we tell him we'll be there in, like, you know, eight, eight days. Shit. I'll let you figure it out. And he storms off back inside. I mean, am I wrong, or am I, or am I just grasping for straws here? I mean, I'm all for just going in there and cleansing the place, but... At this point, I'm I'm willing to let I'm willing to set fire to everything that I can tell across. Good, I know. But, so, but Sylvia wants a formal RSVP before she sets fire to everything. Oh, you send, know. Send the RSVP. Say we'll be there tomorrow or the day after. We have some uh, business to attend to. I don't My know. armor takes forever to polish. Well, you know, it's not that bad of a day to look good. Before we die. <clears throat> I'll and figure it out. The POTUS goes back in, into the corpse room. Hey, why am I why am I the one strategizing these things? Because Derek's not there to actually he strategize. He motions for Mikhail to follow him. This poor guy still hasn't gotten the proper like <laughs> intel. <laughs> and then he goes in and explains, you know, to Mikhail that, you know. Vlad fell. This is how he fell. We tried to revive him. Um, we brought his body back to Father Petrovich to see if he could do it. <laughs> um, you know, he'll probably have to stay in town for a while. Um, so Mikhail will probably still be in charge. Um, and uh, Irina um, comes out of the church um, to um, and walks over to Dirac. She looks a little less confused now than she was. <coughs> a little less confused. And um, she walks over to Dirac and she says, Thank you, Dirac, for taking the children. Let me take them in and one of my assistants will, will get dinner for them. And the There was just a mountain of kids and there's a an orc arm sticking out of them and then he'll he just gives a thumbs up and uh, she she gathers them up come children you're going to have an early early lunch today and uh, they all cheer and she says and and there will be dessert for all of you and she she puts on you can tell she's putting on like a fake smile for the children and she gathers them up and takes them into the house and disappears for a little bit inside the orphanage Yep, I get back up. And seeing that now, now there's no one there, I thought there was going to be at least some talk, and I just, okay, I'll go back to I'm, my I'm garden. So outside. But, I, I, I'm well, so I'm, 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 I'm with, uh, like, uh, back by the kids. I'm not even anywhere near the uh, the church or anything. Yeah, he was around or, the other side of the oh, church yeah. where the orphanage yeah. was. Got it, so got I just, it. I go back to find my goat and then see if I can't find anyone then. Yeah, Victor and uh, Sylvia are outside. Uh, Mikhail and Potus are just inside the church door. You can see them in there. Father Petrovich is not in sight to you, but if Potus and Mikhail can see him come up from the downstairs with some things in his arm, and he begins setting candles up around and so forth, preparing the ceremony. I was distracting longer than I thought I would have been. What's going on? He would be talking to Victor and Sylvia, I, suppo I suppose you're not at the door. Yep. Yeah, to them, I don't know who else would be out there. <sighs> We've been formally invited to go enjoy a meal with our most gracious jerk. Alex. When you put it like <laughs> that, I'm actually looking for uh... Sorry, what? Nothing. You're looking forward to it. Yes. Grandfather has invited you to dinner, Victor. <laughs> Do you have any idea how long it's been since Victor's had a good meal? 
<laughs> Hardly anything's because... even edible in this place. Hey man, just, just because you weren't looking out for yourself on getting a good meal. Ooh, 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 gracious jerk. Uh, okay, so, you know, the one we don't want to name <laughs> is inviting us to the No, you see, you just named him, so obviously he's not the one you don't want to name. The POTUS. Spell it out, literally. <laughs> <laughs> She's just giving this like look, like. It drives I, me. No. no. The, the other Baron. S. No, the other S. Jason or Alex? Sorry, <laughs> that that's the name I meant to say. I don't know why I keep thinking this name is Jason in game. I don't know. <laughs> wow, he's. He's developed the uh, the ability to see into higher dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> Rock was actually a genius the entire time. <laughs> oh man, Victor, could you? And she's just gonna motion to Durak. Victor like, is not I a can. jerk. No, I know yeah. he's no. Well, he okay. To you, he hasn't been. To me, that's a whole other story. I'm trying to think of other names. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to wonder who the jerk really is. Anyway. Let's go, let's, let's go to uh, that one uh, Reddit. <laughs> so it's like, am I the asshole? Yeah. <laughs> Are we the baddies? Are we the bad guys? <laughs> Father Petrovich, during all of this time, has been preparing, and he looks like he's getting pretty ready. Uh, <laughs> Ina returns from the orphanage without the children. She's apparently left them in charge of somebody inside the building. And she returns. She walks up to the door and sees you and Mikhail there. And she says, I suppose we should get the ready. She motions to Sylvia and Dirac and Victor and everybody, uh, offering to have them come inside the church. Sylvia, Sylvia, I think I got it now. You have it. I have to go deal with this. I... I couldn't do it the last time. I don't want to be around to mess it up this time. And she's just going to gently coax Drak off to the side to go talk to him. To go talk to who? You. I thought you said the, for me to no, go she, talk to someone Arena, else. Because Arena asked us if we were going inside to join oh. and we're helping with the stuff. Sylvia's like, I couldn't do it myself the last time. I don't want to be around to screw it up this time. So she's just like, come, Duroc, let's go have a conversation. Okay. And then she'll explain the whole strong letter to him away from too many prying ears. So, well, so why didn't you say his name before? You said the jerk. Because he is one. He took one of our friends. Well, Besides, I don't like saying the name. Just call him the devil, then. Then I would understand who you mean. After everything we've seen, I think there's already too many devils out there. He's the only one I've called the devil. This is true. My apologies. See, this is why I get paid the big bucks for thinking. Sure. Wow. <laughs> You're so sweet, wow. You get paid the big bucks. That, that's wonderful. Oh, God. <laughs> can't even keep a straight face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our, uh, who is or is not joining the <coughs> ceremony in the church? I'll join, unless they need me to distract for kids again. No, the children are being taken care of by one of the assistants inside the orphanage. Victor, Victor's going to stay outside. 
He'll watch. He'll watch oh, the holy, horses. You know, holy he kind of wants to. He kind of want, uh, Yeah, I think what he's gonna do is he's gonna kind of get away from prying eyes, turn into a bat, and go chill out like by one of the windows of the church because he kind of wants to watch this ceremony happen, but doesn't want to be inside of it in case they do some kind of purification or something. Uh, and, you know, Potus pulls out his sword uh, in the Accident. middle of the ceremony to bless everybody with something. Yeah, no, we, ac we accidentally revived Victor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would work. Vlad was trying to work something up like that before life took him away from the game. Do that. Victor is now inside Vlad's body. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so all of you gather around the the corpse and the various religious ceremonial things that are set up inside the church, and Father Petrovich begins to ritually prepare and, and do his things. It doesn't take very long to do the actual casting, but he prefaces, prefaces it with... Um, various prayers and things to Lathander, especially since Vlad was an adherent to uh, Lathander, so he spends a great deal of time invoking the power of the god and so forth and speaking about the return of the morning and a lot of symbolic things about the sunlight will once again return to this land if we can but resist the powers of the darkness and so forth. And finally, he reaches out and lays his hands on Vlad's chest. And there is a long moment where nothing seems to be happening. You can see that Father Petrovich is like straining and even sweat begins to appear on his brow just a little bit as he seems to be struggling with things. But then there is a gasp from Vlad's body and the chest heaves with air and he breathes. He turns slightly, moves on the beer and slightly opens his eyes and looks up and seems to be confused. Irina runs to him and throws her arms around him in spite of Father Petrovich trying to hold her back. Vlad, <laughs> Vlad, can you hear me? <laughs> he he uh, he looks at you in confusion, and he says, "I I hear you, but who is this Vlad?" I'm grabbing my bone knife and just keeping it behind my head back. Irina, kind of gasps a little bit as he says this and he looks up at arena and he goes Tatiana, where have i been it has been a very long time where have i been oh what is your name sergey sir Hippotus take, takes his hand and puts it on the blade and is like, are you still there? Whose blade are you putting this on? Oh, My, the, oh you're mine. talking to... Yeah, you're the sun blade, yeah. And the, the sun blade, is, uh, it's like it is distracted. It's like it hears you ask the question, but it's giddy. And it is... It's like making eeping sounds. Uh, that's new. Seems very excited. What? What's uh? What? What's? What's going on there? Suddenly. He's really back. He's been there, but he didn't know who he was. He's back. He's back. He's back. What do you mean? Sergey! Sergey, he's finally back! <laughs> Sorry. 
in the text yet. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. And he like he like this. It's just a massive claw that grabs Sylvia, pulls her aside, just says, "Okay, so we knew Irina was a reincarnation of Tatiana, right?" Wait, wait, I was out. I was like way outside. What? Just his hand, just, just like very out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. He just like bugbears. Cartoon it, you know? logic. Uh, and meanwhile, I... Victor isn't hearing what's going on. He's just seeing a lot of hand waving and grabbing and what have you going on. I... They put his orders to throw the throw the bard. <laughs> I... <laughs> I thought you were in the room. Never mind. No, it's okay. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't that far away, but it just uh, wasn't present for this. Yeah, she was just kind of back away from the um, immediate circle, but she's in the room. Ser Sergey, what, what's the last thing you remember? I, I... And he grabs his chest, and he, like, pats his chest, I remember my brother running me through with a blade, but I have no injuries. N no, um, that's because, um, he looks at Father Petrovich like, should I just go for broke? Father Petrovich is looking kind of like, and uh, he's just... Gave him a, you know, <laughs> Vlad, Vlad, it's just because of the resurrection. You must be calm. You will remember soon. It, it's just part of the ceremony. It happens sometimes. Irina, it, hap Irina, it happens sometimes. How often do you resurrect someone from the dead and then they come back as someone else? Oh, can't hear you. There have been other things that have happened that are equally as bad. This is what? possibly like one what? of the things. Well, sometimes they have, like, obsessions. They become fascinated with trees, and you can't get them to stop climbing them. Or or they, they remember they have, like, nightmares constantly, even when they're awake, and they remember themselves dying over and over and over, and you can't stop it. But they're the same person the child in Krusk. well what they... he ran off into the trees he didn't say anything when he was resurrected by the abbot hold, hold on a second okay so he grabs Dirac. come here He'll notice that I'm still holding the bone knife behind me because I'm unsure okay. about okay. he just like he just like backs up he's like okay so um <laughs> Where's the talker? <laughs> yeah. Victor's watching right. through the window, just this bizarre body language. <laughs> yeah. What the hell is happening? So, okay, so. What's going what, on? What, you know, wait, get your ass over. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's not, I, technically, we, I would be outside of where Victor is. Get your ass over. <laughs> we, we need to have a, a chat. Um, uh, f family meeting. <laughs> family conference. I guess I'll what? go inside the building after seeing everyone kind of like confused, shaken, and weirded out. So, um, and he just he grabs both of you, just pulls you into a to a huddle. Okay, so um. <laughs> What, what do we know? Okay, so we know that uh, Irina looks a lot like Tatiana. Was, was there something else that we learned about that specific dynamic? I, I don't remember. Opens a little journal, flips through the pages. Uh, she, her true love was Strahd's brother? Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here because Vlad is okay. from here, he, he, right? He, okay. Uh, here's a dumb question. Have you ever seen a picture of this guy? I don't think so, but if we see one and it looks exactly like Vlad, I'm just done. Done. So, okay. 
kill nope. Strahd. And wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's wind back the clock for like five seconds. So that's not Vlad. Uh, he doesn't think he's Vlad. Father Petrovich has revived people before. They had weird things happen, but they've allegedly never not been Themse uh, themselves. Like, they, they've come back and not remembered, but they haven't come back and remembered being somebody. Oh boy, we bet. Oh. oh. So, uh, my. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So, what if. If they are the reincarnations of these former people, that what if they if their current incarnations die, that their past incarnations will take over? Well, Custy, here's the thing. Yeah. You, you know, you know the sword is that I, that I said had had a piece of Sergei. Yeah, yeah, the, the magic yeah, blade. Hold on. Yeah, the sword's very happy right now and sends Sergei's back. Oh, all right. The the sword that you think talks to you. Shut up! Not right now. Okay, Dura. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pretend the sword actually does talk, and she's gonna look over at Potus like just roll with it. Yes, we're gonna pretend the sword talks. The sword pretend pretended. Pretend talks. The sword is actually telling him stuff. You're just and enabling what? him. Why? <laughs> While you are doing this family conference over on the side, things are going on at the altar. Um. Uh, Irina is talking to whoever this person is, Vlad or Sergei, and she's talking to him and her eyes, anyone that looks that way, Victor would probably see it more than the group of you because you're looking at each other, but her eyes get very big and she kind of looks around uh, at the church almost as if she's seeing it for the first time. There's like a and this is where Victor starts. <laughs> and she, she looks down at Vlad and throws her arms again around him in a way that is very familiar. I mean, there it's not just, gee, girlfriend, boyfriend, and she's kind of fond of him. She throws her arms around him in a complete hug. Okay, that's new. I'm just gonna like look and go, oh no. What? One return, the other has as as well. Mm. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, oh, in that case, we're gonna test one thing. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Tatiana. She turns her head and looks up at him. Yes. Sir. Oh shit. Oh, we're fucked. I I told you. Oh. Um, ne never mind. Um, I'm. I'm Oh boy. He just like gives the most awkward like <laughs> Oh no. Everyone this understands is... this all completely. It, oh, this is no. this is normal. We he no. looks he looks he looks back and so it just goes, oh, we are H it's a fuck, aren't we? If he finds out that she t Oh my god, no. We okay, you know what? No. Oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. Since she's here, we don't have time for all this to tell you. We need to make sure she does not leave the cathedral, that she pretends to that she's still Irina. Okay. Oh, 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 I, got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. What? Trust me, I got this. Fine. I got okay. this, no problem. I... We're going to make them pretend they are still who they are supposed to be. She's going to air quote that supposed to be. Because, and I'll just elaborate the story and work it magically. I got this. I, this is this is what I'm born to do. And this she's just this is your wheelhouse. Oh, sweet God, if I pull this off, I'll be saving so many lives, including my own. <laughs> Vlad has now thrown his legs off of the beer and is sitting up and is holding uh, uh, Irina slash Tatiana in his arms. Okay. Hi, you may not remember me. You may remember me. I need you to... This is going to sound really strange, but hi, Tatiana, Sergei, 
I'm Sylvia. Um, you guys have been hiding for a long time, and whatever enchantments were put on you to keep you hidden, I hate to say it, but you kind of accidentally undid them. And I'm going to have to ask you to do the most ridiculous thing in the universe, and I'm going to ask you to pretend you're not yourselves. We, what, what are we supposed to do? Where are we supposed to go? Okay, no, you're going to stay, you're going to stay in, this is currently Velaki right now. You were Irina. You've been helping out with the orphans. You've been working here around the church. You've been doing a lot of good things here for the people and the orphans in this village. The kids really look up to you. Sergei has been masquerading as a soldier named Vlad. And I'm just going to give full freaking name because Vlad has the most impossible name to use in the universe. Vlad is like Iltil Yara. Vlad is are... Iltil Yara. Yeah, that. Um, you've been a cleric of Lathander for many years. We brought you back after your brother kind of went crazy. And we've we, myself, and the people behind me, including one more person outside, have been working to try and undo all of his BS. But in order to have done that, you needed to not be yourselves. Does that make sense? Can't hear you. I can't argue with you. I, 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 I don't I mean, remember anything after I thought I died. I don't know where yeah. I've been. That's why. That was part of the spell. We did it, well, not we, but the people who have been looking after you did it to protect you. Because we've been trying to re restore balance here in Barovia, and in order to do that, we needed him to think you were gone and keep you hidden. And it worked so far, except he knows that Tatiana was reborn, quote-unquote reborn, and he, we've been hiding and protecting Irina, you, Tatiana, and you, we didn't realize we found the other missing piece of a puzzle, and now you're awake, and that's wonderful news, because that could lead for a lot of help and a lot of bad things. So that's why you need to pretend you're not yourselves. Um, roll a persuasion roll, please. Oh god, here we go! <laughs> go high, go high, high. <laughs> Persuasion. Oh, please, plus 13. <laughs> Go. Yeah, okay, we're good. <laughs> she has also very high uh, insight, and yet she rolled a 7 against it. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she looks back at Vlad Sergei, and she says, what she says somehow or other, it, I feel like she's telling the truth. I don't know how I know this, Sergey, but I feel like, like I've awakened from a dream and I can kind of remember the dream. I think that she is right. Sergey, on the other hand, he 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 kind of sticks his jaw. He's acting very male, and he says, "But Tatiana, after what my brother did to us, I it." It is my responsibility to go and make him pay for this. You are not yes. strong enough to do However, so. However, you not just came back from the dead again. Right now, and I'm, and I'm like, I am straight. Yeah, you died she, a little while ago. Trying she, to, she's, she's about this. You died a little while ago. And I mean, like, literally a few hours ago. We had to get you back here to bring you back again. Okay, we just finished clearing out the Amber Temple with you as Vlad. People here know you as Vlad. They do not know you here as Sergei. So you're gonna follow orders, goddammit. Don't get Sylvia mad. You won't like her when she's mad. <laughs> I also have very high intimidation, too. So <laughs> I don't know why I have high intimidation. I just do. You've been dealing with us for so long. So, I know. Sergei looks up at Tatiana and kind of searches her eyes like he's trying to see what her opinion is on it. And she looks at him like she's pleading with him, begging him to go along with it. She 
She wants him to do this. Sergei, I think this is the right thing to do. I think that if your brother does not know that you are back, that perhaps it will surprise him and, and if they can use it to defeat him at an unexpected moment. Please come with me. They will show us where we're to go and we will, we will continue <coughs> playing these roles. So like, now that I've got your attention on this, and she's going to <coughs> somewhat prose poetic explain the entire story of everything she knows about Irina, everything she knows about Vlad, about where he came from, about how he traveled here, every everything that she knows about the two of them and tells them you were falling back in love. I really uh I'm really glad that we still have the part. <laughs> <laughs> um, while she while she is doing this story, um, Ipotis will uh, pull Mikhail aside because presumably he's still there and hasn't been dismissed yet. And um, he will say, um, "Look, we're going to be heading to Ravenloft soon to hopefully bring it into this. If we don't, keeping those two safe." And Malaki safe is your highest priority. You've been an outstanding pupil, and I know that I can trust this with you. And he offers him the amulet of Ravenkind. Because none of us are clerics, and none of us are paladins of good alignment. <laughs> Uh, Mikhail uh, holds the um, the thing and he says, perhaps Father Petrovich should have this, sir. No, you need to have it. Father Petrovich, his place is here. <coughs> Your place is dealing with the hordes of the damned that come to us. This belongs being used to defend the entire town. And it would be, if something happens to Father Petrovich and he had the amulet, it would fall into Strahd's hands. Mm -hmm. If Father Petrovich falls and you have it, the city and those two still have a chance. I understand. Is, is he really Sergei Vansarovich? No, his name is Vladislavus Tizyara and hers is Irina. I, I understand, sir, but if they are really who they think they are, he is the true lord of Ravenloft. I will protect them with my life. For the time being, though, it is Vlad and Arena. And all you have to do, there were a few of the men who did see his body, if you could just assure them that... He was unconscious. <laughs> he's unconscious. He was very gravely injured and is recovering and his privacy. Father Petrovich steps forward and he uh, helps uh, Vlad to his feet and says, come, Irina has a house next to the church where she has been taking care of the children. It will be the best place for the two of you. You can continue your work and no one will know that, that all of this has happened. Come with me. And he looks at Ipotus and the others kind of asking permission to take them out of the church to the house. Yeah, Ipotus will just say, um, he'll, he'll just look at uh, Sergei with just the saddest big smile. Just like, I'm glad you're back, but just please lay low and recover for a while. And um, we can talk when I return. Very good. What was your name? I'm sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> I, okay, refresh your course. Well, I'm, I'm still in the vicinity. This is a POTUS. You've been friends for a long time. Practically oh, brothers. Yes. It is good to meet or re-meet you, whatever. And you, you said you were 
Sylvia, I think I overheard. Yeah. Who is so, the uh, green one? That would be Durok. Uh, and our other companions outside because he can't come in. Uh, you were... You were... As, as Vlad, you were looking for a way to help his condition. I see. Uh, very good. I... This is all a great deal for me to take in right now. I think, Father Petrovich, that, that uh, I, yes, I think uh, we should probably go rest for a while. I just, I need to wrap my mind around all of this. If you get confused or need help remembering, she'll dig around her pack and pull out a book um, that has kind of a um, slightly etched symbol of Lathander on the outside. I was going to hold on to this for a while, but I think you need it more than I do at this point. It is the story I was writing about you coming back to Barovia. Oh, excellent. It, I, I... Every, everyone we have met, every place that we have done, every good deed that we have done in this land, is in this book. Also, it's my only copy, so don't, please don't lose it. I may come back for it. Very well. I, I will take good care of it, Sylvia. I thank you for this, and I I suppose I should thank all of you for, for rescuing me. It sounds like I have been rescued in many ways. And he turns and looks down at, Syl at um, Tatiana and, and just smiles and says, and rescued from the darkness back to the light. Thank you all. And he and they kind of nod to ask your leave and the group of them leave the church and head towards the orphanage if nobody has anything else to say. And POTUS, I know this sucks, but I'm glad this happened here. POTUS turns and heads up. Is it? Because if that spell actually worked back in the Amber Temple, that would have been the worst. All right, so now the group of you are left alone with Mikhail. Uh, Victor, are you continuing to flap your wings at the panes of the church windows? Well, I figure I was like hanging upside down, like kind of like the top of one of those windows, so no flapping around needed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'll, um, you know, I'll kind of come down and uh, I guess get somebody to kind of catch me up on what the hell happened. <laughs> yeah, he he needs some major catching up. So who's coming out to tell Victor what went on? Before I go out there, I'm going to look at Epotus and Duran and go, do I, I mean, I know what, we all know what he is, but do we tell him? Tell who, tell who what? Victor. Do we tell him everything, or do we keep it that he's just okay? We should tell him. Vlad's dead. I don't care what you told Victor. And he goes back to uh, the manor. Bon Mikhail, we have some preparations to make. <laughs> So you're going to uh, whatever the previous the the Don Bacher, the Bacher 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 house. House. yeah he, yeah he's going to the locker house with Mikhail and basically what he's doing is he's just going through like you know, reports from the last couple days um, and just you know getting you know fig figuring out defenses and. Essentially, just making sure that Mikhail has every last bit of information, intel, and um, 
advice that Ipotis can give him before they head off to Raven. Very good. And then he'll and then he'll spend the rest of his downtime polishing his stupid armor. <laughs> All right, so you are planning on leaving the following morning. What all will you be doing? Who will you be speaking to? What messages will be sent? All of the things that you need to do for this afternoon before you take off. I think I'd probably be sitting there all telling Victor what happened, being like, he's back, but he's not back. Um, Victor makes her explain it like twice. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we didn't know him as well as most people thought they knew him. You know how you how do we now do we know that Strahd is his grandsire? Like, do we oh, the character know? Well, uh, what did you tell him about Escher? I don't think Victor shared that information. Okay, so then we don't know. Um, do you know how Strahd is obsessed with Arena? Yes. Uh, apparently Vlad is someone that Strahd, or not Strahd, but that jackass, uh, thought he had gotten rid of. Technically, he's still open competition. I see. Yeah. I, I imagine you wouldn't like that very much. And that's why we will never speak of it again. You got it. I know it sounds stupid, but if I can get stronger, I know he had an idea to help you. If I don't know if I can even learn that ability, but if I can, I'll finish what he started and help you. Don't trouble yourself too much. I, I am still undecided on to whether I would accept such a thing. I am used to living as I am, I suppose. Hmm. Yeah, but, you know. Good way to honor his memory, I guess. Finish what he started. Yes. At least, at least you know there's someone else that's going to try to look out for you at this point. Even though you and I have never been good credit to friends. <laughs> Let's be real on that. But, yeah, I've... So, what do we do? Do we try to call in friends to let them know that Hey, we're gonna do this, and we may shoot off the signal to try and let you know when to help make a distraction. I mean, do we pull them into this, or we just we we don't have the time, as the police said. Specifically, yeah. um, will you tell anyone in the village any of the details, even if it's not to share uh, who they actually are? What about the uh, Martikos? I I. I'll probably I'll probably well, start I'm, making the way to the inn to tell them. Yeah, I'm I'm going to the inn anyways because there are. I think I think, we, I think it's like it's awkward to go back home. My is sad. I don't know what to do. How much <laughs> are you going to tell the Martikovs? Given how spread out the Martikovs are and their alignment, they probably I don't know. Call me crazy, they probably would be another good line of defense to help defend Vallaki. Like, oh, oh Seely, what do you guys think? Yeah, uh, that would probably be fine. I, I think it's worth, like, especially since we've lost Vlad, and I think I think it's worth it to just send a message. Yeah. Saying, hey, we, like, I don't know, yeah. send some sort of SOS. Would you be able to, like, help us out? Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would, I would tell the martyrs because they've always been, they've always been like pride and true. And I think I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm actually gonna do one. Um, I, let me see if I have something else before I use that again. So I think I'm supposed to wait 24 hours after using the last one. Uh, 
Uh, that one's only a range thing. I don't uh, even think specific I Specific questions of people that might be on your list so that I know who knows what. Will there be any kind of sending or any kind of messages delivered to um, Esmeralda, to um, Van Richten, to um, anyone in Kresk? Um, to not what about Kresk. Arena's brother? Um, no, definitely not him. Um, I feel like he'll be, he's still too watched. Um, definitely to. I, I want to send... Now, Rictavio was the circus dude with the tiger, right? Rictavio was Rictavio. the, the carna yeah. carnival master whose real name is Van Richter. Yeah, sorry. Um, he's the one I... Okay, so out of all of this, and then my brain is just like, okay, it processing information, lore, blah, 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 blah. He's the one who got Vlad out of Barovia to begin with. He knows more than he lets on He's the one I want to get in touch with first. Yeah. He's the one that I'm like, I need you to answer everything. Like, did you know, you SOB? Um, that, see, this, is, this is my brain in, like wanting to find that information. Um, the Markov, yes. Rotavio, yes. Esmeralda. No. She wanted to help us fight Strahd, though. She purposely went after Strahd at the cathedral and, re and resulted in my capture. Yeah. No. no. Fucker. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. That's true. Her her hastiness got undertaken, so. Uh... I want to say yes, but it's going to be like. If you're helping, it's on our terms. She you won't listen to us. Signal. She she would not listen to Are us sure? before. Yeah. Well, she, she fucked. The, we told her not to. We told her not to attack, and she went and attack anyway. And she failed. So what does she have to lose with leading this time? Uh, we... everything. We could lose okay, Sergey so and Arena. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna tell her about them. Doesn't matter if we tell her about them or not. The the true. She she is a lit fuse. She cannot be trusted. All right, so you're saying she can be trusted with staying against Strahd. She cannot be trusted with a defense against Strahd if she's just going to go off and be a loose cannon again. Okay. What about um? Uh, what about your barbarian buddies? Or what about I was actually yeah. going to suggest that because, like, foresight. If I had the chance to go back to the barbarians before leaving, we didn't really have that chance because of the uh, that golem chasing us. I would have asked them yeah. to return with us to Lockie. Here's a dumb question. Can, can you hint a note to Shengzor and have him go do it? No. <laughs> Damn it. Well, he, he, A, he can't talk, and B, no, no like, I need to ride him. You, you, to... Pin, you pin the note to the goat and make him go. No, because <laughs> I need him to ride. I need him for riding my mount to victory. Okay. See, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know if the barbarians would understand the message. I have a picture of Sangor climbing right up the side of Ravenloft to fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do I have to be attuned for that thing to work? Because I could send a message. They they understand me. Or oh oh what what was that word that they used uh, to describe me? The, um... I've forgotten now. I remember that. Because I know that those they use. Are you talking about the barbarians at Yester Hill? No, I know those ones are dead. I'm talking about the ones at the Ember Temple. Oh, yep. oh, them. Because yeah. they, they, they describe me as a worm. Because, like, I, here I am wielding the spear of Kavan and riding Sangzor. Uh, yeah, it was something about the one who was promised or something of the sort. Yeah, because I was going to say that the, you could use that word specifically to describe me saying that uh, he requests your aid in the village of Alaki. They'll know that, oh, it's the one that uh, we follow. I don't know. I don't know if we can retcon it so that uh, she knows what that word is because I I can't remember it and you can't remember <laughs> it. it. Yeah, and it it wasn't fully developed that they were actually following you. They just they respected you a lot, but you weren't like their leader. Then it's just basically a formal request uh, for aid, whether they come or not. It's uh, I guess a. Uh... What about? 
this. We can't know. rely on. I, I would say we uh, the werewolf. We still haven't found them yet, so we can't. Uh, oh, no, they, have, they they they're not going to attack the Lockheed, but they're not going to defend it either. No, but whether or not they can come assist if we find a meal. Uh, um, I believe Zulika said that she would not outright attack Strahd because basically I think it boiled down to what she said was in order to keep their cover, she couldn't do any overt uh, actions until Emil returned. All right, so I got, I got this is it. why I wanted to do the Emil thing and the Skull thing, because we still have some unresolved plot points. Well, if we don't deal with Strahd, we'll all be Emil. <laughs> you but, uh, shut uh, your Jeff, mouth. You shut your mouth. <laughs> that's kind of the I... nexus point for everything, is Ravenloft. Right. It's kind of all solved there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm overthinking this way too much. Okay, so Martikov, yes. Barbarians, possibly. Um, Rictavio, definitely. Rictavio, definitely. He is like my number one priority in my book. In my book. Um, there we go. There we go. Right um, oh. Um, oh, what's his name? The Lesser. The oh, guy, uh, Village of Barovia. Well, that was that was uh, her. Yeah, Ismark was her brother. Yeah, uh, I don't. And, and she said she doesn't want because Strahd is watching him too much. She didn't want to send a message to him. Yeah, no, he would be way too. He would be way too obvious. Like if he got a message about arena, about something happening to Arena, that that's it. We're game over on that. I that would is. give you an OOC slight hint. Uh, is to check your prophecies of your ally. Oh, we yeah, we already know that we need to get a hold of uh, the the guy with darkness in his heart. Uh, our, our goal. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust him. <sighs> However, according to Madam Eva, the all the parts of the puzzle have to come together in order to Yeah. Play. So we, we have to have him. That's just like we I have to have all the artifacts. The uh, yeah, about an artifact being left with Mikhail. Yeah, we can't have that artifact left with Mikhail. Are you sure? Uh, according to the prophecy, we have to have all the artifacts with us. Ah, oh, damn it. That's right, but we can't like nobody in the group can use it though. I, I think to, the thing is, I don't think we have to be able to use. I think it just has to be with us. Just has to be with us. Okay. So yeah. in that case, he'll go back and he'll say, "Hey, okay, I'm sorry about that. I have to like retcon that entire epic conversation. <laughs> um, you really need that like really Codis, cool." Would it make you feel better if I just stole it from him? <laughs> you know what? No. He, 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 he at least deserves this. He at least deserves this thirty-second interlude of me breaking the eighth wall. <laughs> Now, Mikhail would just fall on his sword if he lost that after a POTUS call. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that, would, that would not be a good thing. I mean, we could make a duplicate and just hand it to him. We wouldn't have to know different. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. But yeah, I can't think of anyone else. I don't know if we have any other... Uh, All right, so uh, in the half day or slightly more that you've got to send these messages, by what means to whom are you sending messages? Let's start with Rictavio. How are you sending a message to him? I don't know where he is exactly, but the... Okay, if, actually, uh, no. I, I, okay, I figured something. I'm going to go to the Martikovs first. Give them the 411 about what's going on. Ask them if they might have a way to find them. Would they or would they not? Okay. So, so will that if they do. Okay. Uh -huh, sorry. So, do you want to do that now? Do you want to go to the Blue Water Inn yes. and just start there with yes. them? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. So the group. I'll, of... I'll type out. I'll type out my game plan for the others uh, in the chat just to make it easier. Who else is going to uh, the Blue Water Inn with Sylvia? I am. <laughs> I'm gonna drown my sorrows. Very good. Oh, uh, DM can't see Discord chat. You might want to do it in in game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you? Oh, yeah. Um. I need blue water in. All right, so POTUS is doing all his paperwork at uh, uh, Bachter House. Uh, the uh, what? What? What did you rename it as? I think it was just the. I think it was just uh, the Dawn Watch headquarters. Okay, very good. Um, we'll go with that. If we're, we're very unoriginal. What is Victor doing in the meantime? Uh, Victor, uh, I went with Sylvia. All right. So Victor, Dirac, and Sylvia are at the Blue Water Inn. Very good. I'll just put the whole ribbon over them. Not sure what tokens are there. Let's take a look. <coughs> okay, we'll take that one off. We'll oh, Vlad, you're off. back. <laughs> you find Sergey sitting <laughs> with Tatiana talking about the old yeah. days. No. And Ismar as well. <laughs> Down in the bottom right, I see him. Coovers. <laughs> Victor considers Terrible. the idea of Terrible. opening the red water in. <laughs> Oh dear, and what would you be serving? Red water, of course. Of course, yes. All right, very typically, it just seems to be their life. Uh, Danica is bustling about, running back and forth, preparing things. Uh, it is a late lunchtime, probably one o'clock. Uh, people are starting to thin out a little bit. They're not as quite as crowded. The um, the wolf hunters are there. They're perennial meals that they seem to eat there. And you can see uh, Irwin back through the open area of the counter back in the back of the kitchen. He seems to be working with some of the vats of wine and getting some things ready for the evening meal. What are you going to do? I start ordering rounds for myself. Oh, hello! You are back! Wonderful! You have returned safely! Yes, we did. Uh... If I could have some drinks, please. Of course, of course. Do you want just the ordinary wine, or do you want the best? But I'm, I'm sorry, the ordinary what? Ordinary wine, or do you want the best? Uh, uh, ale or anything harder than that. I, I will get you the regular Dragon Crush. Thank you. And she uh, goes and fills up several tankards with a, a kind of a cheap wine that is the common drink here in the in the tavern the lowest grade of the martikoff wine yeah that sounds fine i just, I just want to make sure i didn't miss anything from everyone <laughs> so she bustles about and puts the tankards on and and uh, she smiles where is the poultice and vlad they are Currently I'm indisposed. Just, I, I was just about to sit, and then I'm just like, uh, push away from the table and get up. Uh, can we talk in private? Yes, of course we can. Um, get do, do get you him some drinks. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to both of them. Very well, I'll be back with your drinks in just a moment. And she rushes into the kitchen. And you see her leaning over and saying something quietly to Irwin, and then she fills the tankards and come back and sets one in front of each of you. What, what does that I'll, go, I'll go in the back because it'll be a little bit more private then. 
she actually Outlet. says, come, let us go upstairs. And she takes you up into uh, their bedroom, which their large bedroom upstairs, which has uh, access to the loft that they use above. Ah. <coughs> And the first thing she does uh, before she shuts the door into the bedroom is she goes and she finds the two boys. And she uh, gives them errands that will take some time to go get things, uh, meat and various things, tells them that they need them, and she sends them on errands that will keep them busy for a while. Those little rascals are always listening at the door. I suppose it is in their nature. It is what we do. I mean, it's always good to have an extra pair of eyes and ears if they can, if they know how to keep things a secret. Because, oh boy, you guys are... I, I almost don't want to tell you because I don't want to put you in a bad position. This entire town is in so much trouble. What do you mean? Okay. So, you know how he is looking for Irina? Because she looks like someone. Yes, of course. Well... We didn't find out until just now that someone else is or has the potential, like she, to be someone else. You do realize you are not making any sense, yes? I'm panicking, so that happens, I'm sorry. Um, Vlad isn't Vlad. Uh, He's his brother. Uh, Vlad has a brother? No, no, no. He. The he I will not name because of many, many reasons. Mentioning names makes him be able to scry you. The whole kick oh, oh, thing. Very well, the Dread Lord, yes. What? You mean. <laughs> yes! Right. I. Uh, he. Is. Yes. Uh, that is not good. And he knows who he is now because, unfortunately, Vlad kind of died at the Amber Temple. Uh, this is a lot to take in in a very short paragraph. You do realize this. Wait, okay. Literally all this came down upon my head. Not even an hour ago. So trust me, I completely understand. All right, we will we will have to send word to the others that uh, things are in motion. That we there well, have been sayings and <coughs> things that this might come to pass. Uh, it is not completely well, unexpected. There's there's. I hate to say it, but the but wait, there's more. Irina now remembers who she is because of him, and we couldn't stop that. Uh, you but do realize if he finds out that he will yeah, attack I know. the village. I know. So I have convinced them. And thank God I convinced them. I convinced them to continue to be Irina and Vlad. I don't know how long that will last. But we're going to take his invitation to Ravenloft tomorrow. We don't have much of a choice in the matter. She just plops down in a chair and just stares at the floor and then she looks up at Erwin Erwin you must go to your father immediately they must know that this is that it is happening now it is happening now 
<laughs> is there anything I don't know that I should know? I mean, I feel like him even looking like the brother should have been something I would have been aware of much sooner. I suppose no one was expecting it. I, I, so, I know okay. when Vlad spoke with us, we knew he was from Berez, but we did not realize. That's Even we didn't realize. That's another issue. I, I mean, don't we've think been... there are many images of Sergei. They probably were all destroyed by him. I mean, that would make sense. He wouldn't want anyone to remember who he is. Um, okay, that would explain that. There is one other loose issue. We know Vlad came from Berez. We know Berez was under heavy seat and is gone. It is swamp. We have destroyed Baba, Baba Yaga or whatever Baba the heck lasagna. her name was. Baba, Baba lasagna, lasagna, sorry. Baba Lasagna. No, I, I didn't want to say that, say it like that, but um, we've destroyed her. She is gone. Seeing the carnage and Vlad mentioning that Rictavio Van Richten, rather, got him out of Barovia in the first place. I'm wondering if he knew who Vlad was, and that was the catalyst right there to get him out. It, it sounds like perhaps Van Richten has played a bigger part in this than we suspected. We and knew we that he was trying to work against the Dreadlord, but we did not realize all of this. Well, unfortunately, it's all, like I said, it's all coming, oh, I guess the sh shit's hitting the proverbial fan here. Um, I need to find him. Do you know how to find him? She smiles. Yes. <laughs> the Order of the Feather knows where Van Richten is. How soon can he get here? She looks at Erwin. How fast can you make it to him? Erwin just smiles back at her. If I really work at it, I can probably be at him within an hour. I don't know how long it will take him to get here, but probably by this evening. Uh, then, then he absolutely... If he could come, we'll we'll um we'll let the guards know to let him in. If he can come in 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 disguise, under cover, act like a simple messenger. I I don't know. I don't want we him. Will, I don't. We will safely get him in. Have no fear. Yeah, I want to talk to him so badly right now. It it's been driving us this past. I don't know how long it's really been. Erwin stands up and he says, I had better get flying. I will see you soon. Thank you so much. And I am so sorry to put this on both of you. But in this entire city, there's only so many people we know that can keep a secret. And besides Father Petrovich and you guys, it's a very limited amount. He nods, and he goes over, and he moves a book in a bookcase, and a, a, a trap door extends down from above, and a ladder extends, and he climbs the ladder up into a loft. And then he closes, he pulls up the ladder and closes the, the trap door behind him, and in about five minutes, you hear a loud flapping noise. <sighs> <laughs> it's weird trying to stare at a giant chessboard and trying to figure out what moves you can make and what moves you can't. And Does Victor or Dirac have anything they want to say to this pair? I'm not down. Not, I'm not up there with yeah. them. I'm. Yeah, he's, I'm the, drinking. he's drinking. I think. Uh, Victor, about... uh, Victor, at some point, has ordered a uh, blue rare steak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Grandpa probably knows how to feed you well. <laughs> hey, that that may be good or that may be bad. So, again, I am so so sorry. One minute, I mean, it was fine, and we turned our backs after he started saying his true name, and next thing we know, she's madly in love with him, and literally all our draw, collective draws is in the forest. <sighs> I am even wondering if Vlad knew, but unfortunately the Vlad we knew is gone. I don't, I'm even questioning whether he even really exists. Well, it is, uh, as they say, a fine nest of feathers that we have here, but you, you seem to be handling it well. Go and, and get your preparations made. Erwin will bring back Van Richten and we will we will discuss this later. I need to go out and take care of the of the tavern before people wonder what is yeah. going on. Uh, if anybody asks, I'm a great kisser. And she just goes <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> the poets would probably start wandering towards the tavern. At this bard point. doing bard things. Um, so she she leaves the three, or she leaves you in the bedroom because the other two are downstairs. So do you go back downstairs? Oh yeah, I'm going. I'm I'm going back downstairs. Um, moving on to, uh, figuring out a way to contacting them to stop me. I know it's number three on my list, but that's just who I need to contact, not a priority. Okay, so POTUS walks in. The restaurant now, the restaurant portion of the tavern is, is really starting to empty out. It's getting well past noon. It's probably getting on now towards 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, even the uh, wolf hunters have gotten up and left the restaurant, uh, patting their stomachs and, and uh, talking between the two of them. As usual, the one is holding most of the conversation and the other one is just kind of parroting part of what the other is saying. Gene walks up and is like, do you have anything that can help someone sleep? Why? Wine is always good, Danica says, as she's serving stuff and picking up dishes. Preferably not wine. If that's what you have, that's what I'll take, but she goes and gets you another tankard of the same stuff they're drinking and puts it in front of you. I hate alcohol. I, I can help you sleep, Otis. How? Well, first, you're going to have to remove your armor and let Drac punch you. <laughs> Why would I do that? Because He's going to rock I don't know. To sleep. I, don't, I, I don't know if I can cast a spell high enough to knock out your HP. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help that. So yeah, we're gonna not do that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I that's actually kind of the first laugh I've had all day. <laughs> oh. So is this what happens when you have to do any like major battle plans before big a big event? Because I am under a lot of stress right now. Uh, you see, the trick is you need somehow you need to learn how to uh, take that anxiety and push it into uh, productive behavior. See, my problem is I'm so used to this that I'm already done with all of my preparations. Yeah. She's just going to slide it over to a POTUS. He looks at it. Just going to say, Van Richten will be here tonight. 
Joy. I just, I feel like there's still so much I need to do or get done, and everything's moving way too fast. Everything's gonna be fast. It's gonna be an absolute shit show. The only thing that you can really count on is <laughs> the only thing that you really are able to count on is the people standing next to you. If you can't do that, then it doesn't matter what plan you have. So, so long as the four of us have each other, we'll do as well as we could ever possibly. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've always read about things like events where the underdog or the seemingly underdog pulls out in some grand, grandiose way to a point where it's almost unbelievable. And I have to ask myself, how much did this jerk writing the book embellish? <laughs> I can, I can guarantee you it was all embellished. There's nothing poetic about it. Look at how Vlad died. Someone lifted their hands, said a word, wiggled their fingers, and he's gone forever. No dramatic speeches, no teary farewells, no last, no no heroic last stand. Just I grab my tankard and I look over the opponents to the fallen. Uh, stop that, because he's not dead. Yes, and is. she's just going to give him the look of like, don't blow this. Monarch's probably dead. And if Monarch's not dead, he's just being held so that he can be used as a toy against us or some sort of trick. I, I need every one of you to promise me if he tries to use Monarch against us or anybody else we know against us, do not let him trick us. The moment I see that devil, I'm going to throw the spear right into his face. That's perfectly fine. Just don't. Wait. What? There is no waiting with this no. one. We need, we, when we, we need... go in, we need to have a plan and execute it. Okay. Remember the plan how... is execute it. Jarok, remember how that one person we told to wait didn't wait and they blew an entire plan? We can't go in there like her we can't we'll die we have to be smart about this we have to be tactical about this we <sighs> patient like a, a cobra ready to strike we want to but we can't at that exact moment you have to look for the opening you know I'm just looking at her. Just. I want to go home. <laughs> if, if we. Right, right now? No, I mean, like, when this is over, I want to go home. Where's home? So far away from here, that's for sure. Just looks at his cup. Uh, the two boys rush in while you are sitting here talking at a private table uh, and rush up to their mom. And they have uh, the various packages and baskets filled with the things that she uh, had asked them to get. She comes over with the two boys and she says, would you like the boys to maybe perch on some rooms and listen to see if they hear anything that you would need to know? Uh. 
Are you talking about at the uh, at the place where we'll be attending dinner? No, I mean here in Velaki, but uh, whatever guess, you would wish. Um, I guess make sure no one's talking about things. Yeah, we just need to make sure that no everybody everybody who is talking about Vlad's return is talking about Vlad's return. If you understand me. I understand, yes. Boys, I want you to just sit on some roofs and listen to conversations. If you hear anything about Vlad or anything about legends returning or anything of the sort, you know, anything that seems really strange having to do with the Dreadlord or anything of his people, please come back and tell me, would you? Yeah. Be back by dinner time, yes? And the two boys look at each other with a kind of an excitement like, Oh boy, we get to be spies! And they go running upstairs, and you don't see them again. <laughs> I'm going to rip fucking vampire a different asshole. <laughs> I mean, I just, I mean, we're all in agreement. We just, we play it because we still have to rescue people. We still have to find people. We can't do that if we get ourselves killed doing a stupid move. That's exactly what I'm saying. But here's the thing. Yeah. Is Victor here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So just here's the thing. <laughs> and he leans in conspiratorial and says, look, we need to establish right now some sort of signal that is like, you know, are we going to do this now? Hirok, we can't just see him and attack him. I know you want to do that. I definitely want to do that. He killed my... He, he and his ilk and things associated with him killed my... Functionally, my brother and my son. But we have to do this correctly or we'll miss the opportunity. How many times have we had him close to us and he's slipped away from us? I'm thinking... So, Taking the question Okay, literally. it's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it. I'm just saying. <laughs> we need to figure out what is... So what is going to be our query that we can serve... That we can... He, he's about to say surreptitiously, then he looks at Derek and says, Secretly... <laughs> Indicate to the others that you know is this to what we is this should we go? I miss how beautiful the sunrises are. Just talk about how just talk about the sunrise. Yeah, I yeah. can see Victor going. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm an actual <laughs> sunrise. <laughs> like I don't. <laughs> well, it's something inconspicuous. It can easily come up in conversation. No, if it no. It might be a bit too obvious, though. The sun doesn't rise here. Exactly. I miss how beautiful the sunrise is. There we go. So if one of us mentions the sunrise, and we're, and then if whoever, and then whoever afterwards, so if you say, oh, you know, I miss the sunrise, and then if I say, if each of us say something about a sunrise, we go. But so if basically, one we're all going to if one we're all going to confirm it with the same. If all four of us can confirm it with the same word, sunrise. Yes. It's and, if, and, if, and if one of us doesn't respond with the word sunrise, we don't. Can you do that, Derek, Victor? Sure. Derek doesn't understand. Okay, so here's what we're what we're saying. Pretend it's like an ambush, but we're standing in front of the devil. 
Okay, so so say we're say we're sitting at dinner with the devil. We're having a conversation. If you think we should just attack him, you just say something about a sunrise. You know, like oh, you know, I miss seeing the sunrise, or the sunrise in the mountains is beautiful, something like that. And then okay. the rest of us would say something would say a sen- say something that has the word sunrise in it. And if all four of us do that, we attack. Otherwise we don't. Code word sunrise. That'll be the title of the next Code word chapter. Sunrise. I mean if it's not if that one doesn't work, we can always think of something else. It's... Sorry, I'm I am being weirdly in this right Or moon. Moon might be less uh obvious to him. Do any of you need any supplies before you take off up there? Uh, it is rather I need obvious. My <laughs> <laughs> um, it's rather obvious, O.O.C. Lee, that rests might be few and far between in that place because it's not exactly a place that's conducive to to a lot of resting. Uh, so make sure you are equipped with everything that you need. It seems we don't have a cleric. Uh, probably going to need some health potions. Yeah. Uh, I guess since I look like I can actually change out a few spells, don't I? I can do those later. Not wearing my red type deal. Uh, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> I was just looking through my options and oh, on an OC level. I only have two level five spell slots, and I'd have to sacrifice either synaptic static or Bigby's hand to get mass cure wounds. Uh, let me see what I can prep because I can probably prep. Well, I mean, I have cure wounds prepped, so it's not a combat thing, but I can help with out of combat stuff. Oh, wouldn't damn. So the spell would not have that spell would have no effect on you. Sorry, dude. During your preparations and you're talking about preparations, Danica is uh, one single handedly um, preparing the dinner, getting it set up and the roasts ready and things for the evening influx of villagers that will come in to eat. She is out of hearing at this point in time. And the the clock is slowly ticking down the hours. It is now probably about four o'clock in the afternoon. So probably if you want to go get anything at the stores, you should probably go do that at this point. So are you going to go off to the mercantile and or maybe yeah, we're going to look for like healing potions and whatnot. Same. Very good. You you find most of the things you need. Velaki seems to slowly be getting a little better equipped. Its merchandise is improving. It's as if somehow or other, with a better group of people handling the affairs and economy of the village, it's slowly kind of getting itself on the feet. And you are getting more like what you would expect to find in the various stores. Not perhaps a huge amount, but you are able to find everything you need at a reasonable price. Especially when they give the group of you a discount over some of the other people that might come in. Because Balaki just welcomes your aid in getting them back on their feet. Eventually, evening falls, and um, you have not seen or heard anyone come into the village or anything, but that doesn't mean anything. Are you going to check at the inn? What are you going to do to find out who has come? And what did you do about 
uh, information to the other people that you needed to send to? Uh, was the Vistani still close to Valaki, the one that we're... Um... Yes, the camp that Aragal is associated with is semi-permanent at the uh, uh, Dark Elf Village, Dusk Elf Village. Yeah, I will, um, with, with the POTUS's approval, uh, get a scout or a guard to check up on the village and deliver the message to them. Like, deliver, like, actual, uh, written thing stating. How will it be worded? Uh, making a move, um, Invited to dinner at Ravenloft. Uh, will signal when it is time. Very good. And Sylvia's name at the bottom of uh, Dodge at the bottom, so they they know what group it was. But, yeah. You know. Very good. <coughs> you are um, able to hand that to a guard. The guard uh, frowns and shakes his head and says. Probably best if one of the Velaki does not go, but I will get one of the young delivery boys to take it. They will be more likely to be able to go in there. They don't take well to the Velaki guards. If you tell them that their allies sent you, tell them that Sylvia, Ipotis, Durok, the ones who saved their niece, or daughter, niece, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I will, will word it better than that in character. Um, Basically, the guard, though, is telling you that, that they yeah. shoot Velaki guards on sight, so he's going to get a young man yeah. to take it that's not a guard. Yeah. But she'll tell them, it's like, when you approach, say out loud, I was sent by the By those who rescued your niece, yeah. Yeah. So that way they don't shoot him on sight. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I will send a uh, message to not go out that far, which is the... Do I have anything else that I missed? Message. I have to, like, look through my spell list. I have so many spells I could but I don't because <laughs> it's still work on a dead. Where um, are you now when you are uh, writing this, making notes, doing things? Are you in a store somewhere? What are you doing? I'm in the I'm in a corner of the inn. I I never left. I I just found like the most private corner that I could get, and I'm just doing everything from there. She's just, she's being spy master. <laughs> There is a, a flurry of sound in the kitchen, and Danica looks up and bustles back, rus rushes rather quickly back. You can hear the sound of large wings uh, and then footsteps. And um, uh, a moment later, you hear a sound like uh, some kind of door or something opening. There's a kind of a wood on wood sound coming from the kitchen that you don't remember having heard before. It's a very odd sound. I'm going to pretend like I don't hear it, but I am keenly listening in with all my half, half elven hearing. <coughs> you hear voices, you recognize Irwin's voices, and there's a quieter voice in the mix, and uh, you hear Danica's voice speaking with Erwin. Danica comes out in about five minutes and comes to the table. She uh, acts like she's cleaning up the table, picks up some dirty dishes, wipes the a cloth across the table, smiles at you in a friendly way and says, your friend is here. Uh, do I still have my room upstairs, or do I need to buy a new one? Your room is always held for you. I blow a kiss, and I was like, they can meet me up there, and I'll head on up. Remember, you go outside the building and up outside yeah. the stairs to get to it. 
I'll, I'll head I'll head towards where my room was. I will send him up. Who is going with Sylvia? Who's in the inn? Who has gone to do business elsewhere, please? I put us a drink for a bit more and then um, he head back to uh, continue finishing preparations before bed. He's he doesn't have any like non traditional method of communication, so essentially just lets me kind of know to but like basically if if Sylvia tells them to do something, it's pretty clear that he's okay with it at this point. So how many of you would be there when Danica came to tell you that your friend is in the end? But it's probably still be there. Victor, are you there? Dirac? Uh, I think I would be. Okay, yeah. I just didn't know if you were out somewhere doing something. So all of you know, are you are you joining Sylvia to go speak with him? Sure. Sure. Very good. So you go into your rooms and um, you find Rictavio already seated in your rooms with his legs crossed just waiting for you. I understand you wish to speak with me. Did you? No. When you took him from Berez, did you know? Specifically, no. But I suspected, yes, it was obvious he had an old soul. Exactly whose, I wasn't sure, but it was obvious he was important. It was why I risked everything to save him. And I'll just sit down opposite of him and start rubbing the bridge of my nose, pinching it. Kind of relieved that he didn't know exactly, but at the same time, just letting everything process still. Well, the child was clearly a soul that was involved in the history of Barovia. And he knew things, he said things, he, he acted in ways that showed that he, that he was an old soul. And I, I had to save him. I, when the village was attacked, I, I hid him and then I spirited him out of Barovia through the Vistani, through Madame Eva's help. Would you like to know who? Yes. I can't say the name because if I do, then I will. No. I. I... <sighs> Vlad is gone. Just letting you know, he's gone. He is the way you remember is gone. Yes, unfortunately, yes. Who he really is is now walking around inside of his body. <laughs> Except if word got out in any strong capacity of who it is, everyone's dead. So. I'll let you chew on that for a minute. I know of, I know one person figured it out. Who? Danica, and she's a smart cookie. Oh. The prophecy. The, the feathers prophecy. Uh, what is this prophecy? I've heard mentioning of it, but I don't know what it is. You are literally the only person who... They said a time would come when, when those that fell would rise back up and defeat the Dreadlord and that souls would come at the time they were needed, that ones he had killed, uh, perhaps his father, perhaps his mother, per 
perhaps even his brother and obviously Tatiana, I believe she has come many times in history. I don't think the attack on Rez was an accident. Here's here's how I how I see it, how I've been piecing together everything besides this besides not knowing anything about this prophecy. Perez wasn't random. Perez was done because he knew he was there too. And you took it away from him. As you said, Tatiana has appeared many times across history. I'm pretty sure he has too. And I'm pretty sure there's a wake of destruction. The brother. The mm -hmm. brother. You speak of the brother. And if we're not careful, and he finds out, this town is gone. I'm deadly serious about it. He is here now? You know this? No, it. I've seen it. I had to convince him to not be himself. What else it is not... time. It is time. We must no. act quickly. We we have to act as soon as you are able. We, we must take him by surprise. We are going to act swiftly. You? You're going to make sure this village stands. You're going to make sure they stand. Are we clear? I protected him once. I will protect him again. I am his uncle, you know. Um, unfortunately, that that part of him is gone. He may remember it at some point. He may not. Well, Sorry. Uh, act quickly. Do not do not spend much time. For every minute that the clock it's, ticks. It is possible that one of his spies will will hear something. Someone will will buy something or say something or do something that will give them a hint. We must act before he can find out. We're leaving in the morning. We're not Good. in any condition. We're not in any condition to go right now, or we would. Good. Good. You must do so quickly. If. We have a plan if if we're able to send out a signal of some sort to let people know that now is the time to rise up. We're going to make that signal happen. I'm going to find a way to make that signal happen. Use the ravens. Danica's ravens can do it. They can send messages all across Barovia by their flocks. It's got to be something bigger than that. Uh, when you see it, you'll know it. It's going to be the bat symbol in the sky. I got a, actually, I got a plan to go visit a toy maker. <laughs> I just thought of this. Oopsies. Barovia is a very overcast and dark sky, isn't it? Yep. What better way to make something sparkly than... I don't know. Fireworks. <laughs> <coughs> Very good. So, I'm going to braid. Even if the dude's store is closed, I'm breaking in and taking shit. Well, we, we can assume that he's probably just finishing up and closing for the evening, but he is still open because he does hold rather long hours. Yeah. That's just kind of his life. He's there and he lives in the back of the store. So he would be I've able to, to deal with you. Uh, the uh, first thing you notice as you walk into the store is his piccolo, his um, monkey, is running from one end of the place to the other, uh, holding a doll in his hand and making chittering sounds. He seems very happy. And when he notices you, he stops and makes monkey sounds. And Blinsky immediately sticks his head around from out from behind uh, the back room area that leads to his living quarters. Ah, oh, I believe it is Sylvia. Yes, oh, you have come to see Blitzky again. I have missed you. 
you so much! I get that a lot. Tell me, do you have anything that can go straight up into the sky and make lots of colors? Uh, Anybody? uh, kites? I have balloons? Um... I'm, thi I'm thinking... Boom. Uh, uh, like rockets? Yeah, something like that. Just basically something to brighten up the dark skies. Oh, yes, I have fireworks. Yes, come here. And he takes you over to a kind of a large urn or a vase kettle sort of thing where he has some um, old-fashioned rocket fireworks with the long stick fuse on the end of them. And... Uh, he, he shows them to you, and he says, you can tell the colors that they will burn. He says, and they, they light across the sky. Is a no, bl Blinsky is a no fun. Out of curiosity, you got me that'll make the shape of a raven. Shape of a raven? No, I don't have anything in a bird shape. Hmm. I can change what they write. If you don't want me to have Blinsky, I can write something else. Hmm. Dawn. <laughs> yeah. Let's have it say Dawn. 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 Dawn! Oh, that is a wonderful word. I Blinsky very much likes the sound of the word Dawn. I can do that. I will have it ready for you in the morning. Excellent. So I'll need it for tomorrow. Wonderful. We will it's have also... a celebration. It's almost like the old Burgomeister is here. We will have another celebration. Oh, there will be a celebration, all right. My way. Curiosity question, and I'll take extra. Can you make at least two or three? Of course. I have six here. I will just rework them so they spell a different word. Hmm. Dawn has come. Ah, I like that sound. You do I know like that will too. upset people. Nah. It'll make the whole world cheer. And she's just going to put on this big so. cat grin. Blinsky would very much like to see the dawn come again. I will have them ready for you in the morning. Right, Piccolo? <laughs> Thank you. And she's going to just drop, like, uh, 30 gold on the table and walk out. Very good. And at that point, we will call it for the evening. And we ran a little long, probably will a few episodes since we're kind of <laughs> getting in step with the next phase here. We will assume that you go back. Is there anything else critical that you have to attend to? Do um, you, you want to have that chat, Pira? Did you, did you want to have that on camera so everyone... I mean, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Um... I just want to say before they get into it that I will have taken the time to uh, contact the werewolves um, and sent, con uh, sent word to the Bulgarians just to give them a heads up and let them know about the fireworks. Very good. Very good. Um, let's see, there was one other question I was going to ask, which has now slipped my memory. Hopefully it will come back in a moment. Um, Okay, go ahead, Epotus and Durok. Epotus, Durok has a plan. Go ahead. The devil has played on Durok's insecurities before. How I am a stranger, how I am not fit, how... I should be looking over my back because one of you might kill me just because I'm orc. What if I play that into his hand and pretend that I pledge fealty to him to be his sword like he tried tried to before? Well, you know I would never kill you because you're an orc. Of 
course they know. You wouldn't be able to anyways. And I give a, a <laughs> grin. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I use how, that how, did, how did he contact you? Through dreams. He did the same with me. I, I think we all talked about this before, back when we've all had them. Yes. But, uh, I pledge fealty to get closer to him, and I use that code word to let you know that I think now is the time to strike. Uh, were we going with, uh, uh, moon or dawn? Where did we land on that? Sun, sunrise was sunrise. the code sunrise. word. If you, well, here's the thing. If you do that, and only I know, well, actually, no, it's probably better if you do it than I do it. What? Never mind. Um, if you see an opening for it, go ahead and just, uh, as you do it, just mention something like, uh, I never did want to see the sun rise again. Something, you know, something to appeal to his idiotic. Iraq will think of something. I'm sure he will. I get paid the big bucks after all. Sure, we'll go with that. All right, we will assume each of you finds your whatever bed you are going to rest in, whether it's the room at the inn or it's at Vokter House, the Don Watch headquarters, or wherever you are able to find a bed to curl up in, and you will be able to completely restore your hit points. Uh, I know Sylvia stepped away for a moment, but I, she needs to make sure she... Um, has her hit points restored, so I'll keep an eye on that when we start out next time. But uh, we will assume when we return in a week that it is dawn for the Dawn Watch, and they are preparing to head out. It is time. Ravenloft awaits. Ravenloft has called. Very good. This has been an interesting evening of discovery. We will see what uh, happens next week. And in between, keep an eye out for my Fallout streams on Thursdays, where we do some interesting experiences. Last week we set up a bunch of nuclear bombs, which was quite interesting. Um, and then on Saturday, don't miss the Are You Sure with Kyle as the DM in that in the land of Myrrh, we're headed back to try and defeat a witch who seems to have Karen Hold in her grasp. So we'll see what happens. We hope you have enjoyed watching Crone's Crucible. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, start your own game. It's a grand thing to do in your spare time. Anybody can do it. See you next week. Bye-bye.